In the last video, we learned about customer lifetime value, its importance and what are the ways to improve it in order to maximize the revenue. We also discussed why high CLV is a good indicator of better customer satisfaction and how this high CLV drives more revenue. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. Starting this video, I'm going to show you the steps to calculate CLV so that we can distinguish active customers from inactive customers, predict the purchase volume of all the customers as well as forecast transactions for each individual customers. We will also see how to develop the related model using Python. So watch this video uh, and the subsequent videos till the end to get the complete details. Please don't forget to hit like and share buttons. Consider subscribing to this channel if you are new here. If you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So if we want to predict the customer lifetime value, then we can do so with the help of just three features. We would be using BGNBD model as well as gamma, mo gamma model to find out the CLV. On a high level, we can say that CLV is equals to expected number of transactions multiplied by revenue per transactions multiplied by margin. We will calculate the expected number of transactions using BGNBD model. Revenue per transaction will be calculated using gamma gamma model and margin is something which is proposed by companies business folks only based on historical purchases. We can take an industry standard value of 5% if it is difficult to get the margin value from business team. BGNBD model also predicts the probability of whether customer is alive that is active and has interacted with uh, the company or are they dead meaning inactive. If I take an example, let's say a customer signed up with the e-commerce company two months ago or as a matter of fact, a brick and mortar store two months ago and has made eight rides since then. His last ride was let's say 10 days ago. So based on this data, model can predict the probability of customer during a specific period of time as well as predict the expected number of transactions in future. We will be using a package called lifetimes which contains functions and metric to estimate CLV. You can install that package by entering the command pip install lifetimes on command line. If you want to go through the documentation of this package to know more about it, then you can head over to description section of this video where I have provided the link of it. And this is the documentation page of lifetimes package and you can see a lot of information here. In fact, it has the installation instructions as well as well as information related to sub packages sub modules etc by the way bgnbd stands for beta geometric negative binomial distribution model and this model was proposed by fader hardy and lee and here is the paper where they proposed this model i will provide the link of uh, this paper as well in the description section Please note that I am not covering uh, the mathematics around BG and BD model as well as gamma gamma model here. But if you want mathematical details as well, then let me know by commenting in the comment box below and I will create a separate video on that. For now, just understand that Python libraries are available to implement these models and I am going to cover them while developing our customer lifetime value model. As far as data set is concerned, I will be using the online retail data set which I used in customer segmentation project as well where we were finding out the most loyal customers of the company as well as the ones who are on the verge of churning out. If you want to watch the uh, that playlist then you can click on i button above. This data set can be downloaded from UCI machine learning uh, repository and I will provide the link of the same in the description section and you can see this is the UCI machine learning repositories website. So this online retail data set uh, contains a transactional level data with details like invoice number, invoice date, uh, unit price, quantity, customer ID, etc. So let's quickly move on to the Jupyter notebook uh, where we would be first doing some data munging activities to bring the data into desired shape. So in the first cell I am uh, importing few necessary libraries like pandas to perform data 
frame specific uh, tasks and matplotlib for generating few visualizations then i am reading our uh, online retail data set uh, using read underscore csv method and passing the name of the file as well as an additional parameter called encoding equals to cp1252 here so this cp1252 encoding also called as uh, latin1 encoding uh, is used to replace code page based character sets in short it is used to help reading the data even if uh, even if there are certain invalid characters in it in the next uh, line i used this head method to show you the first few records of the data set you can see that uh, this invoice date column has both date as well as time and we have to get rid of time portion because it is of no use in our analysis so we would just need date portion only in the next line I am just validating the number of records and columns in the data set and for that purpose I am using this shape method. When I ran the cell I got the output as 54909 and 8. So 54909 is the count of total number of records in the data set and 8 is the count of number of columns. In the next cell I am checking if there are any missing values in the data set. Hence I am utilizing is null method and using sum to get count of such missing values here x is equals to 0 represents the rows if we keep x is equals to 1 then it means that we are trying to do any particular operation uh, on column only so when we ran the cell we got to know that there are uh, two columns called description and customer id which has missing values right and customer id has uh, 135080 missing values and description has 1454 4 missing values for now we can ignore missing values of description column uh, but we can definitely get rid of uh, missing values of customer id column in the next cell in uh, the first line i am just uh, removing the time portion from the date time format of this invoice date so this line of operation will return only date we will validate that when we are going to see first few records of the data frame later on in the next line we are just filtering out all the records which contains missing or null values for customer id column since our analysis is based on customers hence we will remove the customer ids related columns uh, which has missing values we can use not null method to keep only those records which contains customer id values and this is the way we it can be done uh, as shown here on the screen in the next line i'm validating if there are any records with negative values for column quantity if in case there are negative values present for that column then we are not including those records next we are adding a new column called total sales in the existing data frame by multiplying quantity with the unit price uh, total sales column will be used as a monetary value and uh, will be required by lifetime package at the later stages to generate summary for transactional data as well as for other required analysis the resultant data frame contains lot of columns and we require only three column specific data for now hence through next two lines here we are trying to achieve that first we are creating a list of column called necessary calls which we require and then we are filtering columns based on that list and you can see that list contains only three columns customer id invoice date and total sales lastly i just printed first few records of the data frame using head method and you can see that uh, a data frame contains only three columns here customer id invoice date and total sales and the invoice date now contains only date and it doesn't contain any time portion in it that is time is removed from date time format of the invoice date so folks I will take a pause here. I will cover the steps to develop the BG NBD model and show you how to generate and visualize the probability of alive customers as well as other supporting charts. So stay tuned. So here's the question from today's video. What is the full form of BG NBD model? Please post your answers, comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button down below. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.